nearly 40 to 50 percent of India's population were involved in making of the cloth, making of a fabric. In Karnataka, there is a place called Gullet Gudda. This entire village and this region is focused on just producing one particular type of blouse uh, textile. They only do the blouse. Unfortunately, between 1800s and 1860, mm, uh, I think millions of uh, hand weavers committed suicide or died of starvation because of the East India Company's policy of those days. I went and sat there and when I was twenty-one, I really believed I'm smart, not anymore, okay? And I couldn't take my uh, eyes off this guy for more than two hours because he was doing some magic with his hands. And like that, a flower comes up here, another flower here, perfectly geometrically correct. The activism about child labor mixes up what is apprenticeship, what is learning process, and what is labor. Especially children, it is a crime to wrap a child in a polyfiber. They're saying an average American has 28 grams of polyfiber in his body. How much is this a cause of cancer, other ailments, whatever liver, kidney problems that people are going through all over the world? There are no studies to show us this. There are many, many Indian designers who are very competent in the international market. Without commercial value, people will not invest their lives into it. In Tamil Nadu, for example, in Erode, this Tex Valley is the largest uh, wholesale, uh, you know, textile market. Very innovative, which is giving a physical platform for all the weavers to come there and have temporary marketplace. It's like the old shandy, but in a modern atmosphere, where there is a certain security and they can store their products there and come and open their shop whenever they want. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, I don't think India's economy in the past has ever talked about jobs. It is always talked about what can you create, what can you do, uh, not about where can you find a job. Jobs were only government jobs a little bit, rest was all enterprise. This is a knowledge that you acquire over centuries. You can drop it in five days or you can drop it in a few years, but to acquire that, it'll take a long time. No other culture can suddenly pick up knowledge about jute, grow jute and make jute products. But we are capable of that by 2030, if 30 percent of the land is dedicated to fiber cultivation, a huge relief would come to the farmer because now he has a product which is not perishable, where there is uh, more opportunity to market it in a lucrative way rather than desperately put it out in the market. And as I told you, I was also been a mulberry farmer and a sericulture uh, farmer, so I know how silk is and how fine it is, but so this certification for what is organic and what is not, uh, if we make this India certification process compliant with the international standards and it is acceptable to uh, international audience, I think that would be a big step for India's cotton to go where it has to. I also invested myself in growing cotton at one time. I, do, I took out two crops. So I took five truckloads of cotton, really loaded. It's everybody's cotton, including mine. At the forest gate, they stop and say, you are smuggling sandalwood. I said, no such thing, we just want to go to the market. He says, no, I want to check, unload the cotton now, in the forest. A whole lot of uh, high-value currency notes in Japan. The yen is all made with banana, banana fiber. If Japan can have banana currency, <laughs> I'm not saying this <laughs> in any negative way. Uh, we so the British are... pound, Sadhguru, is made of Indian cotton. <laughs> is that so? Yes. British pound is made of Indian cotton? Yes. 